Hello, welcome to Delight Channel. Always a pleasure to have you here with us. And this week, we are slowly getting towards the end of what we started. Yeah, like six weeks ago now, we started something on change and change management. And um, surprisingly, it has, it has taken that long to get to this bus stop. With this week's edition, we are wrapping up what we've been focusing on so far, which has to do with change and change management from the organizational perspective. So if you like, you can also call it organizational change management. And um, the last couple of videos are focused on something we called the change curve. But before then, we've covered a lot of ground. We've dug around this concept very, very deeply. And then if you have missed any of those videos, if this topic is interesting to you, we invite you to please go back and watch. But this week, we will be focusing on specific case studies to underscore the point we've been trying to make over the last couple of weeks. And what is that point? The first point is that change and change management does not just happen by chance. If you are going to have successful change projects, you will be deliberate, you will plan it, you will apply a lot of skills, knowledge, information to ensure that you make a success of that change effort. Number two, we have also tried to let you know that no matter how hard you try, you cannot run away from change. Why? Because the only constant thing in life is change. And number three, we have tried to underscore the fact that your team or the individuals in the change effort do not just move automatically through the phases of shock and denial, anger and depression, and magically just appear on the other side of acceptance and integration. You have to do whatever you need to do based on all the things we've shared and more to ensure that you lead them across successfully, efficiently, and effectively. What will happen if you don't? Just take a look at the picture on your screen. There are two curves there. There is one that is called the managed curve and the other one is the unmanaged curve. What you find is that where you have the managed change, the curve is sharper, it's like a hockey stick. You find out that the amount of time spent, and I, and I dwelt on this a bit last week, at the level of uh, negative performance, the amount of time spent in the negative zone is very short, very brief, before the team emerges onto the positive side. Why? Because all the things we've shared with you and more would have been applied to lead the individuals and the teams to ensure that their transition from the first phase to the third phase is short and very quick. But if you take a second look at it, what do you find in the unmanaged curve? You find a scenario where the team spends a lot of time in the negative zone and only down the line finally manages to emerge at the point of the positive performance. Truth is, sometimes they do not even emerge. And um, if the first case we'd like to cite to underscore this point that we've been sharing is this case of France Telecoms. 2007-2008, there were 24 deaths recorded in France Telecoms over a period of 20 months. Why? Because the company was going through an intensive phase of a privatization effort it started several years before then. I stumbled on this case a couple of years back and it never left me. And um, even though the company tried to explain it away, the company tried to find other justifications for why people were committing suicide, the fruit fell too close to the tree that it was impossible to deny. As a matter of fact, the deputy managing director at that time 
who was championing this change had to resign. Now, what are we trying to say here? We are saying that as an entrepreneur, as a change leader, your team, your subordinates, they've entrusted their lives, they've entrusted their career into your hand. When it comes to change management, it's a loaded gun. You cannot take it carelessly. You cannot handle it carelessly. You got to pay a lot of attention because, as we have seen in this case, it could even lead to people committing suicide and losing their lives. A similar case, coincidentally, also in the telecom space, and I do not know why, is the case of Nitel. If you are familiar with Nigeria or the African market, you will know that in 2001, Nigeria introduced the GSM uh, telephone system into the country. And of course, the only telco provider at that point was Nitel and he had an automatic ticket to the game. Sad to say, almost two decades after, the only license that is yet to fully, fully flourish is the NITEL license. Why? He just hasn't been able to make a success of that change. And um, it, 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 it's shocking and it's very difficult to explain away because Unlike all the other players that had to come from outside of the country, had to hire people, acquire facilities, build infrastructure, Nitel was supposed to have a head start on all of them. But sad to say that if you run the statistics of subscriber numbers in Nigeria, they don't even show up anywhere in that chart because they do not, we don't even know whether that license is alive right now or is dead. All right? So, the point we're making is that change in this environment, in this our age, is something you need to build capacity for. No matter how successful you are right now, no matter how much of the market you are covering right now, if you don't have a change management capacity inbuilt into your system, before you blink, you may actually become extinct. Let's run across, let's run along to the third one. And this very excitingly is a positive story again if you are familiar with the african market you will know the dangote story yes he got his break when he got an import license but that is just a very small part of the story between then and now many changes of regime many changes of policies in fact at some point when importation was banned he looked inside started investing in local production capacity, diversified his portfolio, ran, I'm sure right now is, is operating in, I think, over seven countries in Africa, maybe even 10, as high as 10. He's building a refinery. I'm not sure exactly whether he needs it for his core business. He's built, he had, just name it. The man has just done very well for himself and for the African continent. Why? because of how well he has been able to manage all the change that has come his way and we can see him still flourishing the last case i want to share with you should be a case of hope it's a case that should tell you that if you have already started your change journey and it's not going is not necessarily going as planned and you are worried or maybe even overwhelmed or maybe maybe even disappointed this story should give you hope and it's the story of Nokia. Yes, if you have been following this channel, you will know that I've said a couple of them about Nokia. But I was surprised to realize that last year, 2017-2018, Nokia ranked third in the quantity of mobile handsets shipped in the UK, only behind Apple and Samsung. Now that caught me unaware. Where did that come from? I mean, we thought Nokia was dead. Microsoft tried to acquire it. They have struggled with different operating systems. It didn't quite seem to have gone off the ground. But they refused to die. Why? Because at the heart of it is all the things that we shared with you. Going back, building their case, learning to rebuild, communicate it, and then push it aggressively through. And then we are finding them now slowly coming up on the chart. 
But maybe you do not appreciate how deep they sank. 2007, 2007, Nokia commanded over 50% of the market share globally. Six years later, 2013, they went as low as just a little over 3%. Yes, 3, from 50 to 3. Now, a few years later, 2013 to 2018, like another five years, now they are beginning to come up again, number three in supplier, in supplied handset in the UK. It means that whatever you are dealing with right now may not necessarily, should not necessarily be the last chapter of that, your change story. Go back, watch all the videos that we've shared. Check it out. Apply as much of it. Let's know if there's a way we can help you. Seek help wherever you can find it because you too can turn that your chain project around and it can become a fabulous success story in a few years down the line. I'm sorry I got to stop now because like I said, I don't like these videos going too far. But if this made sense to you, share it with somebody. If there's something you need us to clarify, come back to us. We'll be glad to do that. If there's a topic you'd like to see us cover, send, in, send it in and we will set it up for, for somewhere down the line just to be sure that whatever you are looking for on your journey to living your dream will contribute a little quarter to it. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, from everyone on this side, all we are saying is thank you for making it a date with us week in, week out. And whatever you do, don't ever forget that Tim Hack is still my name and all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. See you next week and bye!